project documents, what do we mean by that? Now, this is a long list, but keep in mind that anything which is a document related to the project, whether it is about activities, milestones, assignments, proposals, data, that is all a big word called project documents. Anything that those are needed as a part of those goals, schedule, everything, right, Dr. Sam? Correct, correct. Any, anything which relates to the documentation of the project hmm. is, is kind of a project document. And plans, how many plans are there? So many plans. 18 of them. How many documents? 33 of them. So like you were saying, uh, if you meant cost management plan, no. But cost estimates is a document. Mm -hmm. Cost forecast is a document. Budget, budget, something related to the budget. Something related to the budget uh, is part of the cost estimates, right? Cost estimates. Okay. See the word budget we use a lot in the uh, real life. But in the PIMBOG, it, it is more of a baseline. Okay. Yeah. It comes from the cost management plan. Mm -hmm. A cost management plan will be there. Cost estimates and forecasts will be there. Budget is a cost estimate. Okay. So what is happening in integration? Deliverables are being produced. Changes are emerging from here. They will be controlled in monitoring and control. Project managers meeting the stakeholders, talking to them, learning some lessons, but still the project work goes on. What do we get? Deliverables. If we have 10 deliverables total, only five will come out. Five, you're still working. So data is about the performance of the work being done, the issues being handled, the requests created. All that will lead to the update of the plan because you figured out something new has happened. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's why these are the outputs. You also create the knowledge. As a good project manager, we always want to keep the knowledge because if the one team member goes away, or changes the team, then all is lost, right? So creating knowledge and storing knowledge is one of the key jobs of a project manager. So what goes in, you have the documents, everybody's working on their assignment or part of the team. You have uh, resources and you have the stakeholders, you have the deliverables. Now you use your techniques. Techniques, you will see all of them are similar, right? Interpersonal, talking, meeting, knowledge management. And you can come up with a lessons learned register. Knowledge is created for future reference. And this is still in the execution phase, right? Dr. Sam, manage project knowledge. Yeah, I mean, this process is added. It was not there in the previous uh, revision. And the answer is that, hey, as you are working, you're creating knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Right. After this was done at the end, the end of the project, lessons learned. Mm -hmm. And then at that time, nobody remembers what we did six months ago. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. You remember high level things. But if you if it is a continuous process throughout the project, Oh, what did we learn for this? <gasps> we need to do this next time. We mm -hmm. need to not repeat this mistake, right? Mm -hmm. Or we need to have this UI guy in our team right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. We need to have this database guy in our team because he just comes and goes, right? So mm -hmm. some of those lessons learned, whatever those lessons are. Mm So as a project manager, we apply our expert knowledge from different, different projects we've done. We use um, knowledge management, information management, 
looking at information and different different sources, applying an interpersonal skill, which is the key job of a project manager, then creating the outputs. As the work goes on, the PM sees that everything is going all right, everything is on track. Uh, he or she devil monitors the progress, reviews the progress, and comes up with a uh, observation based on analysis of data. Where do we stand right now? Are, is everything going good? No. What does the report say? Reports say that we are on track. The project is on time. It is on on budget. Very good, very good. But however, these three requirements, we don't really understand them well. There's more work required. We need some more money and funding for that. So let's make a request of change to the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So this is where the flow of the work or actions I, items are done. Performance is assessed against the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, evaluation happens, forecasts are made, change requests are made, issues are surfaced, and changes are approved. I mean, the request is made and approval will happen in the next process. And the plans are updated. How do we monitor the work? Performance versus plan. Status, reports, forecasts. How does the PM analyze what is happening? Well, whatever we made initially the plan in terms of ROI or cost benefit or net present value, where are we? Let's analyze the data. Mm -hmm make a decision, let have a voting, or we are all unanimous that we agree that this is not okay, or this is going great. What, what does everybody think? What does the majority of the crowd think? Are all of us in agreement or 70% or 80%? Let's have a vote, let's have a meeting and finalize with the stakeholders. When we're making changes, it's always good to be preventive in changes, right? Then a defect appears. So preventive changes are the best because if you make preventive changes, then you may not need a change request, which means be proactive. Mm -hmm. But if somebody brings that to you, take a corrective action immediately. Often in real life, preventive is gone. Corrective is not there. We are reacting. When what is reaction is a defect, right? Wait. Operation, what do you call Post-mortem. <laughs> Fixing bugs. They should not have been there in the first place. Second last item is changes. So mm -hmm. we need to make some changes and those changes will entail changing some requirements or adding some requirements, which will mean more money, more time. So let's go as an expert, I'll analyze that, make a decision, go to the change control board, get an approval, and that approval will change the plan, right? Because now you need more time and you need more money. So it'll change schedule management plan, it'll change cost management plan, it'll change everything down the line. So change control meetings will happen, change control boards are there, they will evaluate, you, you will generate options, get an approval from the board. And if there's a customer involved or a client, you get a buy-in from the customer. Change control is a very tough item because you know a lot of projects get delayed unnecessarily or sometimes actually blocked because of change control. You can use change control tools, analyze the data, make a decision um, yourself or through the team or stakeholders make a decision based on steering committee or PMO makes the decision. And finally, you achieve the goals or you fail in the project. Two possibilities, right? The plan told you what to do. The deliverables were created. They were accepted in validate scope in, in UAT. Now you're finalizing everything. Uh, it's a close out. Final product is ready. It either goes into next phase, remember? Mm -hmm. uh, or it 
it is completed. You document lessons learned, you go live, you do a CSAT score, and the final product is ready. You again go and update your OPA knowledges and project report is created. So this is the financial closure because no more funding after this. Acceptance happens. Who did well, who didn't do well, reporting of performance, lessons learned, closing of the project. As a project manager, what do we do? We apply our expertise. Uh, if you don't have that knowledge, we go and get from other sources, accounts, finance, how was the funding and how did the money spend go? Analyze the data, do trend analysis, documents, look at everything, variances, have a meeting, and finalize the project. Let's take a break. Monica needs coffee. <laughs> sure. <laughs> what this? You have 15 minutes, is it okay? Yeah. Yes.